Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Edens, finance coach, author, and wealth mindset researcher, and I'm here to help you unlock your inner millionaire by developing a wealth mindset and finance skills. And I'm so happy you chose to join me today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me if you're new to my channel. So let's get started. So Warren Buffett is one of my my uh, inspirations when it comes to wealth mindset and finance. He is world, one of the world's richest people. Um, he's 93 years old and he's got a current net worth of 121 billion with a B dollars. And so I feel like on our path to unlocking our inner millionaires, he is a really good role model to learn from and has a lot to teach us about money. I've done a whole two part series on Warren Buffett that I will link to in the description. And if you want to read more about him, this is his biography. I really love this one. I'll link to the dis this in the description as well. Um, but really, really fascinating book about kind of where he came from, how he met with so much success as an investor, and um, just really fascinating stories about him and his family and their lives. He's really a very down-to-earth Nebraska native. He lives in Omaha, Nebraska. You'll often hear him referred to as the Oracle of Omaha. And he is very practical. He still lives in the home he and his first wife, Susan, bought in 1958. He drives an old car, he eats breakfast at McDonald's, and he even put off buying a private jet for years, even while all his other billionaire friends had them, because he just thought it was ridiculous. Like, why would you ever need to own your own private jet? And then when he did finally eventually need to buy one, he nicknamed his the indefensible because he felt like he couldn't defend his purchase of this private jet after years and years of making fun of his friends who were buying them. So I feel like among the wealthy, he has a very, very interesting outlook on life. He reminds me a lot more of the wealthy people um, that Thomas J. Stanley studied in his book, The Millionaire Next Door, which I'll link to in the description as well, about wealthy people who don't necessarily go out and just spend and spend and spend all their wealth on consumption and luxury goods and kind of what we see a lot of on social media today with wealthy people and kind of that... Um, consumer flex that we see a lot of. So yes, Millionaire Next Door is like a super great book if you're looking for inspiration. And Warren Buffett also is a wonderful example of philanthropy because he's pledged to donate billions of his fortune to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation once he passes away. And so he is someone that has built a lot of wealth knows how fortunate he is. He and his family have been very generous with others throughout his life and then is planning to donate the vast bulk of his fortune when he passes. So really inspiring that way in terms of being able to, you know, figure out how obviously he made an enormous fortune through investing, but then he also has put that money to really good use over the years rather than just spending it on a lot of uh, luxury goods or some of the things that the ultra rich spend on with the jet set crowd, things like that. So with that in mind, here are my top 10 favorite Warren Buffett quotes. And let me know in the comments which ones of these are your favorites and what resonated most with you about these. All right, you ready? Here we go. Number one, do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. I feel like that is the best advice that pretty much I've ever heard about saving is prioritize your savings because that way you've got money for retirement, you've got money to put into your investments if you invest, and you're not just blowing through your money every single month. So he really credited that his habit to save first was what, and obviously investing, was what really helped him build his fortune. And remember with investing, it's good to get an investment advisor and educate yourself about investments. It's not something I advise about here on my channel. And you can always lose your money with investments just as easily as you can make it. So very important to understand that and that investing doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make a lot of money unless you're invested in the right things. So good thing to think about there. But Warren Buffett's investment strategies are actually really interesting to study as well. I'll link to another book in the description that he shares kind of it's, it's his letter to investors at Berkshire Hathaway. And it's a really interesting resource as well for you if you want to kind of know more about how Warren Buffett's investment strategies worked and what made him so successful that way. Number two, should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. 
So how many times have you found yourself in a situation where something just wasn't working out and despite that you just kept on trying to make it work for whatever reason, you know, maybe it was because you didn't have a lot of other good options or you thought you didn't have a lot of other good options. Um, maybe you just felt like it was going to really wound your pride to have to admit defeat and quit, you know, whatever the case might have been. Um, but his, his wisdom here is just when you find yourself in a situation that's not working, it's often more productive to just get yourself out of that situation and find something that's going to work better rather than stick around and try and try and try to make it work. So I thought that was like really good advice because I could think of so many situations in the past that I probably should have pulled the plug on much sooner. You know, even think about this as applies to investments. If you've got an investment that's not performing well, move your money over into something that's performing better. Just all kinds of different uh, applications for this, but wonderful quote there. Number three, all there is to investing is picking good stocks at good times and staying with them as long as they remain good companies. So that basically summarizes right there Warren Buffett's approach to investing. It's also called value investing, which is investing in companies that are a good value and that um, because of their management and the way they're run are likely to increase in value over time. And so that was his whole investing strategy practically right there in a nutshell. Number four, if you aren't thinking about owning a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. And this one really was a wonderful one because I think you can apply this to stock. You can also apply this to really anything else in terms of buying things and focusing on the quality and the investment that you're making in something. I think a lot of times with this consumer culture that we live in where you're buying the next fad thing or the next thing that everybody's got and then three months later everybody's going to want something else and you know getting keeping up with the next cool it thing um, it can just really start to you know go through your budget really quickly. So buying things that are high quality with that longer term vision of how long you're going to own those things and making sure buying good quality things that will hold up over time time is really great, whether it's investments or anything else. Number five, opportunities come infrequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. So for all you sewers out there, you know what a thimble is. I should have grabbed one out of my sewing kit to show everybody who doesn't know, but basically it's like a little metal cap that goes on the tip of your finger. So when you're sewing, you don't stick your finger with the needle. Um, and so the, the idea behind that quote was just fantastic because, you know, it is very true. You know, for many of us, our opportunities are fairly infrequent where we don't necessarily have like amazing, amazing opportunities that come along every at the drop of a hat you also have to be really good at spotting opportunity that's something Warren Buffett was fantastic at in particular with stocks but he was fantastic at spotting opportunities as well and so it's really good to a keep your eyes open for opportunity and then when you see something that comes along like you said put out the bucket not the thimble and so that way you can really have the most benefit out of whatever your situation is for you so that you're not just there just taking a little bit of advantage of it, but taking a big advantage of that situation. So love that quote. He had a really similar, similar one to that as well, but that concept of raining gold, but it doesn't rain gold every day. So you got to watch those clouds for gold and then be ready with your, your big old bucket to catch those those, uh, you know, the gold coming out of the clouds, theoretically speaking, obviously it never rains gold. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I'm just glad when it rains at all, because where we are, it's been so dry. It feels like gold when that stuff comes down. There's actually thunder outside right now, so we'll see if the internet holds up for the rest of this video. Okay, um, number six is keep things simple and don't swing for the fences. When promised quick profits, respond with a quick no. So I love that. He was a big baseball fan, so that swing for the fences is a baseball analogy of you know taking a taking a big hit for a home run. Um, but very, very good point there. If you see something that is supposed to be like a get rich quick scheme or something like that, you think about playing the lottery where it's like, oh, just buy a little ticket. It doesn't cost very much, but you could become a millionaire or billionaire overnight. You don't want to go there. What you want to do is really focus on things that are going to be building your wealth sustainably over the long term, not those get rich quick schemes. So if somebody approaches you with something that sounds too good to be true, especially in finance, it probably is. Um, if it sounds like it's, it's that, then like you said, respond with a quick no. Very, very good advice there. 
Number seven, the difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. I have seen so many really successful people talking about this over the last couple of years, about how important it is to prioritize the way you spend your time, the way you spend your money, um, the just all kinds of different things. What you say yes to is so, so critically important to get right because it's that's the way we all have limited amounts of time and money. And so being able to prioritize the way that you spend those on the things that are most important to you and your family is absolutely critical rather than being in a situation where you're constantly saying yes to everybody else and, you know, spending money and saying yes to purchases that aren't in line with your budget, you know, you name it. But being able to be strategic and prioritize and, and be, be comfortable with saying no when you need to is very important because I think especially for us women, it can be very hard to say no. You know, a lot of us were perhaps culturally conditioned growing up that saying no was rude or impolite or people wouldn't like us as much if we said no. And so there's, there's gracious ways of saying no, obviously. I mean, I think some of my favorite ways of saying no to people, if they've asked me to do something, I just simply don't have time for, or I'm frankly not interested in, is to say something like, you know, I'd really be interested in that, but I just don't have the bandwidth for it right now, or my schedule doesn't allow it, or please send me the information about that and I'll get back to you on that when I've got more time in my schedule. Um, you know, all kinds of things like that. So there's, there's gracious ways to say no, but obviously, you know, people's feelings will be hurt sometimes if you say no to them. And that's just part of life. You know, when, when someone's asking you to do something, do they want you to say no? Hmm, no, they want you to say yes. And so if you come back with a no, they'll often be pretty persistent and really try hard to get around that objection. So you just have to hold firm and know why you're prioritizing the things you're prioritizing in your life. And that's, that's true whether you're sticking to your budget, you're prioritizing taking care of your health, you're prioritizing your professional development, you're prioritizing spending time with your kids and your partner, you know, whatever it is that you're prioritizing in your life is the thing you need to stick to. And you don't know, you don't owe people an explanation for why you're doing things the way you are because everyone's got their own priorities. And so if you say no graciously to that person, they will find someone else to do whatever it is that they want done. And it might even be a better fit for everyone involved because you've said no. So just think about that, that you're perhaps doing them a favor by saying no because they'll go find someone that might be a better fit anyway and and then you can kind of take a deep breath and move on and, and keep prioritizing the things that matter to you and same thing like I said for saying no to purchases because sometimes that can feel very hard if you have something you really want but you know why you're prioritizing your budget you know, it can be really difficult to say no to purchases, really, really tough. I've got a video on um, how to avoid impulse shopping and impulse spending because it can be very, very easy to um, end up saying yes to too many things and blowing your budget. So I'll link to that in the description as well. I also have a mini series that I just started about mindful money and I'll link to that too because I think you'll enjoy that as well. All right. Let's keep going here. Number eight, the most important investment you can make is in yourself. I love this. I mean, how great is this? The most important investment you can make is in yourself. Say aloud with me. The most important investment I can make is in myself. So important. I don't know how much I can emphasize this to you. And I love this quote when I ran across this. Um, one of the things he recommends is to read 500 pages a day. So he's a big reader. He reads constantly. He's, like I said, he's 93 and he's still working and he's still reading and he's still learning. So it's never a good time to like stop learning and rest on your laurels if he's still doing it in his 90s. So he says, read five pa 500 pages every day. That's how knowledge works. It builds up like compound interest. All of you can do it, but I guarantee not many of you will do it. And, you know, when you think about pages, you can also count in watching YouTube videos like this one, listening to educational podcasts. Um, you can count in reading books. You can count in reading blog articles on the Internet. So it doesn't even have to be a physical book. We have so many great educational resources now completely for free. Um, but just to continue to make that commitment to invest in yourself Invest in your health, invest in your professional skills, invest in relationships with people that really make you shine and make you grow as a person and um, and who are nurturing and kind to you and investing in those kind of people. And sometimes making that investment, you know, decision to invest in yourself 
comes at, you know, where you have to say no to some stuff you used to do. And sometimes people aren't too happy about that, but it's like, Hey, you know, at the end of the day to live your best life and to be the best version of yourself, it takes time. It takes money. It takes, you know, making yourself a priority so that you can be the best version of yourself and then put that back out into the world and share that with others, whatever your unique and special talents and gifts and abilities are. Number nine, if you're in the luckiest 1% of humanity, you owe it to the rest of humanity to think about the other 99%. I love this quote so much, and Buffett isn't just saying it, he's living it. Like I said, he's donated millions and millions and millions of dollars over the course of his life so far, and he has the bulk of his fortune slated to go to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation when he passes. So he is just an incredible example of philanthropy and of really knowing that, hey, you know, he knew he's, he knows he's lucky and to have, you know, been able to amass this enormous fortune. And so he's giving back to those who are less fortunate. And so I absolutely love that. That's something I teach a lot here on my channel. You will hear me talking all the time about philanthropy and giving back. And I just think that's so, so important. And you don't have to be a multi-billionaire to give back. I think sometimes the ways that we give back can feel so small that we feel like it's not making a difference. But believe me, it does because we don't know the impact that we have on other people. You don't even know how maybe like smiling at someone like in the grocery store that might look a little bit discouraged and just smiling at them can really make a difference. So it can be little things. If you don't have money to donate right now, you could do some volunteering or you know, something along those lines. So there's all kinds of ways to give back, but it's just such a good practice and habit to get into of really realizing how lucky we are and then how we're able to give back to other people and to really be able to make a difference in the world. Because there's so many people around the world who are living in dire poverty. They don't have any opportunities, frankly, and um, really no hope of making their situation or condition better. And so for us to be able to make the world a little bit better place and whatever way we can is just a wonderful habit to get into. And number 10, I really love this, so I saved this for last. Basically, when you get to my age, you'll really measure your success in life by how many of the people you want to have love you actually do love you. I know people who have a lot of money and they get testimonial dinners and they get hospital wings named after them, but the truth is that nobody in the world loves them. I mean, how horrible is that? But I, I go, it's, it's true. You can be very successful in life, but not have anybody that cares about you and not have invested your time in those loving relationships. It's totally possible. If you get to my age in life, and again, Buffett's 93, and nobody thinks well of you, I don't care how big your bank account is. Your life is a disaster. How great is that? He really doesn't mince his words. He's like the most quotable wealthy pe person I've run across so far, which is why I love him. Um, the, that's the ultimate test of how you have lived your life. So, you know, if you, people think well of you and love you, the trouble with love is that you can't buy it. You can buy testimonial dinners. You can buy pamphlets that say how wonderful you are, but the only way to get love is to be lovable. It's very irritating. If you have a lot of money, you'd like to think you could write a check. I'll buy a million dollars worth of love, but it doesn't work that way. The more you give love away, the more you get. So I really, really like that quote a lot. And especially if you pick up a copy of his very thick biography, um, it's really interesting reading through Buffett's early years because he was very unpersonable and had terrible social skills, unfortunately. And so for him to be saying this, I think is especially profound because he was extremely introverted, did not get along well with anybody and eventually was able to really learn how to build strong, loving relationships in his life and build all this enormous financial wealth and then really keep those priorities straight that it's not the money that's important. You know, obviously it gives us opportunities. It gives us resources. It's a tool, but what's really important in life is our relationships with other people. And so I think that that's just absolutely fantastic to be able to see someone who's built that kind of wealth and then didn't get sucked into it and was able to still keep his priorities straight. Because I think that's something that we see a lot of wealthy people. They experience such extreme success in life and it's great, but then they don't focus on like the things that really matter in life, like relationships. And so their lives can be maybe externally, they can look very glamorous and very amazing, but then maybe they're very lonely or, um, you know, very just, don't have people who love them, like he said. And so I think that it can be really tragic to be that successful in like 
one corner of your life, but not very successful in other areas like relationships. So it's really a balance in life, isn't it? Just kind of trying to figure out how to balance all of this out and be able to use money as the tool it is, not get too consumed with how to get rich, but then also be able to keep it in perspective and be able to donate and give it away. And then also be able to take that time to focus on our family and friends as well and build those strong relationships throughout our lives since that's what's really important in life. So love that quote to finish out with. Let me know which one of these quotes or which many of these quotes resonated with you the most here in the comments. I would love to hear from you as always. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and come over and sign up for my newsletter if you want the bullet point version of my videos because I send those out twice a week behind when the videos publish so that if you just want to save the thoughts that I shared in the video you've got it there also on my blog so I'll link to all of that so that you've got access to that I just try to make this easy for you and easy for you to find things and kind of stay organized I've got my blog now in Spanish which is awesome so you can read it in Spanish or if you're a native Spanish speaker and want to read it that way so I'm adding constantly all kinds of things to my website, which is sarahedens.com, so that you've got more resources over there. Also, all of my book recommendations, and you can access those there as well. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again soon in my next video.